Page 34, Joy to the World. This is in 4-4 time, so there's four counts in a measure, and we're counting quarter notes. We're using the white keys on the piano. I don't see any sharps or flats anywhere. It's all white keys. Let's talk about this one hand at a time now, because the hands are getting a little involved. Starting with the right hand, that first note is two ledger lines above the treble staff, and you need to memorize that note. It's an important note. You're going to say it a lot. Two ledger lines above the treble staff is a C, a high, high C. It's two octaves above middle C, right up there. Just memorize that note. So the right hand is starting here, and what we have is a C major scale going down. Hopefully you're doing the C major scale. Please do the scales for whatever pieces you're working on. They will help you in so many ways. So it's here, just a regular C major scale. Reach up to the octave and do it again. And then for measure five, you're going to play the C again, but with fifth finger. And if you look across here on the second line, measures five, six, seven, and eight, most of eight, that is again a C major scale. Just forget the rhythm, play the notes. That's another C major scale. All we got to do is add the rhythm. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Remember the dotted half note is the same as three quarter notes. It gets three counts. And then reach up second finger. Now if that's too big for you to reach, you can go ahead and use third finger. Here and then on measure nine, you'd be four and then three. Remember we can use repeated notes to change hand positions when we need to. So take advantage of it. Then I'll measure 11, that C, that is tied to a dotted half note, you hold it down for seven counts, or for forever, whichever comes first, and you go on. Measure 13, two and then a three. Then again, we changed hand positions on a repeated note. It happens a lot. Now, on measure 18, you're here, one, two, three, and they went third again. I don't recommend it. I really don't recommend that finger. I don't want to use the same finger like that. We don't need to do that. So what I'm going to recommend you do is the measure before, measure 17 on the E's. On one of them, anyone, don't care, change, change hand position, use two on the E. We just went from here to here. here. So it's one, two, three. Now you're in position for the third finger. And again, measure 19, again on the Ds, change and use second on one of them. So you're in position for third finger on there. And reach up and collapse, the, relax. Cross over. Left hand, you're starting on measure five with a C chord. Again, learn to recognize these chords as one thing. You just see th th that pattern of notes like that on those spaces. That is a C chord. You just play a C chord. You don't have to worry about three notes. And try and get them down at the same time. And you're holding them down practically forever. Now go over to measure seven. One, two, not bad. And measure nine, you got the four chord. Rest, five, seven. We're only using two notes in the five, seven, but that's okay. We can do it. And then let's go over to measure 19, where the little, the little finger's got to come down. You, really, you're moving the whole, the thumb stays where it is. You're moving the hand down, just so you hear. Again, it's a 5-7 chord. We're only using two notes in it, but okay. And that, and then for measure 21, it's C chord again. And then the last two measures at the bottom. You have a G and a 5 7, and then a 1 chord, and then that two ledger lines below bass clef is a C. Remember, I told you two lines above treble is a C up here? Well, two lines below bass is a C down here. You need to memorize that note too. Know what it is. Put the hands together starting at measure 5. You were here. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1, 2, 3. Right there. When I play F, the left hand comes up. 
So it's a. Look at it. All right. Major nine and ten, same thing. The left hand has a rest, so make sure you play the rest. So you go through and put the hands together, and then go back through the trouble spots and get rid of the hesitation. So the beat is a steady beat, and this can take a lot of time to do. You know, I don't care. I'm in no hurry. Whatever. Then we can add the articulation or the slurs and the staccatos and the accents and things. At the beginning, you get slurs. Lift up. Lift up. So lift up between the slurs, and also at the beginning you get accents. Just play each one a little louder and claps the wrist just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit on each of these. You're just playing them a little louder is all that. On measure 17 or 16, you're here in staccato, short staccatos, and I'm hinging at the wrist. The left hand really doesn't have anything marked, so I'm suggesting to connect everything in the left hand that you can. You lift up for the rest, and if you have to move, you can't connect. Otherwise, you do. Dynamics apply to the melody. The first line, well, there's only one thing playing, is sort of loud. Whatever you think moderately loud is, mezzo forte. The accents, take them up to loud. So I don't know if they want the accented notes at moderately loud. In my mind, they want the accented notes, they're going to be loud because of the accents. And then at major five, you're loud. The melody, everything else is in the background. That needs to be soft. So we want to hear the, this, not this. This is background. So keep the left hand soft. down a little bit to pick up to measure 13 to moderately loud. The left hand soft or very soft, whichever. And then pick up to measure 16. This is soft. This is very soft. Come up a little bit, sort of soft. And this, the left hand you do, there's no rest here. One, you're loud. And you finish it loud in the right hand. The left hand staying in the background. How loud you are in the left hand is up to you, but keep it in the background. Speed <clears throat> joyfully, so be joyful. There are lots of recordings of this. If you were going to sing it, this is a very happy song. about that area. They've added pedal. You don't need pedal on this at all. You do just fine without it, but they've added it. So, okay, let's talk about the pedal. Now, at the beginning of this, because this is loud, it's accent, I'm going to push the pedal down with the hand, with finger, excuse me, at the same time. You can, in this case, actually put the pedal down right before you play the note. What we want is an explosion of sound here. So, I put the pedal down first and then play the note. I'll leave that up to you, with the note or right before the note, whichever. And leave it down for the whole line. And then at the end of the line, when you lift up, lift the pedal up with it. So there's a little bit of silence before we go on. And you don't pedal again until the last measure here. Here, that notes go down first, and then the pedal, and then the pedal, and then hands come up together. And that's the pedal. That's all. Don't use it anywhere else. You don't need it anywhere else.
close enough? Mm -hmm. If you want to do the other verses, you just repeat back to measure 5 uh, from the end. There's no repeat sign shown, but that's what we got. You got to repeat somewhere. And there, you don't need to do the introduction every time. The introduction is just at the beginning. So just repeat back to measure 5, and you just keep doing the other verses. And the play with me, I'm only going to play it one time. That's fine. In fact, let's do the play with me now to double check all the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics. I will pedal it like they've shown. Yeah, we'll see. But I'm not. I'm going to play both hands about the same. I want you to hear. You should be playing the same notes I'm playing at the same time I'm playing it. And that's all this is for, just to check notes and rhythms. So I'll give us four counts. One, two. Ready, go. Two. 